Hi guys, I should actually apologize by now. Not another Hamza video. Oh dear, but this one is funny. Well, sometimes anyway. It's about an exchange on Hamza's Facebook page where he praises a guy who made a really bad knee-jerk reaction video to Captain Disguise's refutation paper on embryology. And I pick up the thread where Hamza is asked why he keeps running away from debates he has already agreed to. He generally seems to run away from debates with anyone knowledgeable in Islam and Hamza's underhand tactics at delivering lies. A guy calling himself Al Mari demands an explanation. And oh, does, does everybody know who Al Mari was? The, the famous Arab poet, famous for his unusual style and contents, born in the 10th century in today's Syria, who said, the world holds two classes of men, intelligent men without religion and religious men without intelligence. That Al Mari. Anyway, this person demands an explanation why Hamza keeps on dodging a debate with a knowledgeable person. And he gets nonsense back. Like, how does one point out a non-existent fallacy? <laughs> it's strange. Then, then Hamza condescendingly lectures Al Mari that context is everything. Is that why Hamza's posting of grant the oppressed freedom, patience and tranquility would mean in the context of his writing about the five suspected terrorists which were being thrown out of the UK that he wishes these five suspected terrorists peace and tranquility? Well, if context is everything, I would say yes. And hundreds of his fanboys like this. <laughs> well, until a Muslim dares to tell the truth, that is, someone talks about the reasons why one of the suspects, Abu Hamza, was declared undesirable. His hatred for everything non-Muslim and his incitement to physically attack them and steal from them. Oh, and by the way, a Muslim who followed this advice and knifed down a police officer during a demonstration is now in a court in Germany. His only comment, violence is admissible in Islam against the Kufar and for Allah. Anyway, back on track. Awam Al Mari tells Hamza what a whining douchebag and crybaby he is, and a coward on top of that. And well, now something funny happens. Enter a character called Poshi Wifey. <laughs> wow, what, what a name to call yourself. That's typical modest and humble Muslim. Well, the, the, the new age Muslim, I suppose. This character jumps in and first of all, just to set the tone, insults Captain Disguise by saying that his vids etc. were hilarious. And then she claims he makes error upon error and to round it off an ignorant error. Whatever that is. Without any proof or evidence, of course. Then another quick insult and finally she adds a name, apparently trying to ping someone to come and help her out. This happens at the end of all the postings now. And one and a half hours later, he or she or it has had some time to ferment what stupid claims were made, so now she comes back. I'll, I'll just call her a she because of the name and definitely not because someone that clueless, dopey, as well as discombobulated can only be a female. Definitely not, okay? So she comes back a couple of minutes later and now writes the most befuddled hodgepodge I have seen in a while. So let's start. Number one, Hamza has no time. Now, does she have access to his calendar? He's a professional Muslim and this is all he does and he gets paid for his incompetence on top of it. Hamza can't speak for himself, so she has to tell everyone that Captain Disguise is a crackpot with a blog. <laughs> She sees fit to inform everyone that Captain Disguise is not proficient in Quranic or ancient Arabic. Well, neither is Hamza. Neither are 99.998% of all Muslims. Captain Disguise is, however, proficient in modern Arabic. Hamza is not. So what's the point? And now comes, well, what I call the logics part. Captain lacks ancient Arabic. This does not reduce perfect Islam but reduces his shortcomings. Do you detect the logic here? I don't. The Quran is not confusing. 
So why have scholars been debating the meanings of sentences for, what, 1400 years? And this character can explain everything? Oh boy. But, she says, it's the greatest book. Without saying by what standard, or on what scale, or by whose vote, and on what list. Well, now, there's a need to backpedal immediately, because it's not that easy after all. Amazing what using a second brain cell can do. Well, it, it can't be too many though, because a statement such as education is a must, so intellect is important, destroys any credit there might have been for the existence of grey matter. How can education, I mean, how can education garner intellect, even if it's guaranteed by the Islamic belief? I mean, education is something that is that is learned, and, and intellect is, is an ability. I mean, ay, ay, ay. Now, the highlight of the common sense and logic of this person. Mockery equates to credibility. Because if you look at the opposite, this is what she says. I mean, what on earth happens inside the brains of these people? We share our genome for flippant sake. And then as a grand finale, we get number 10. The words, vague and ambiguous words, sprinkled throughout the Quran regarding the creation of human life forms is called specific by this marvelous specimen of the human race, whatever specific may mean. And it is titled as embryology. I mean, why am I not surprised when this female admits she is in awe when listening to Bouquet? the biggest simpleton of the Islamic creationists. Now hang on, that title is held by Yahya, or was it Naik? Or do they share it? Anyway, after Almari has called her out, she feels she can do even more damage to the reputation of the group called ignorant Muslims. But doesn't she know that a discussion involves more than a single person and a rant does not? Doesn't she know that education, no matter what kind, type or level, does not automatically refute anything? Doesn't she know that claiming to have some sort of tertiary education somehow needs to manifest itself somewhere in the text? I mean, an opinion is an interpretation or emotional evaluation of what is perceived as fact. So all someone can do, I mean someone outside, is show that a perceived fact is actually faulty, which should cause a normal person to change their opinion of something. But the opinion, is, I mean that itself, can't actually be refuted, it's an opinion. I mean it's, it's an emotion or it's, it's an interpretation, how can you refute that? Now, the university education, note the capital U, which is very important, now it comes through. But not too, too much, or is that too much? Not to mention, no, not to, not to mention spelling in school. We are told she ignores people she knew prior due to time constraints and amusing and refutable. And she owes herself so much more. I wonder how much. But now I'm puzzled, because if she finds this creepy, why is she there? Why does she need the need to speak for Hamza when she was not invited to the conversation between him and Almari? And wow, she now tells us she has a life and does not make points on blogs and career and family. And she makes points on blogs, well, all the time. <laughs> Her attention span seems to have been used up now as we read about her brother, or maybe just another guy called brother, or someone she would like as a brother. Anyway, some guy who knows so much, except he's not here. So this big brother would show our Almari. Oh yes, because this big brother is awarded. Yes, awarded he is. And in this field, which field? Bullshitting? Exaggerating, bragging, embryology, Quran, Islam, who knows? She realizes she's out of her depth and resorts to the standard line of defeat, the big white flag. It says, die and you will suffer in hell. Standard. Ta-da! We now have the only true statement here. Truth doesn't change because you don't like the answer, or it doesn't suit what you want to be true or your lifestyle. It's a pity she's too deluded to realize the contents of this little nugget. Well, 
but now it gets outright embarrassing and I feel a little bit like a peeping Tom. She says it's late, her hubby is waiting, well, in bed, I suppose, and she hugs Hamza. Hmm. Now, unless Hamza is the hubby, I feel just a little bit uncomfortable at the moment. But before she goes off and joins hubby, she needs to draw Hamza's attention to an important Zeitgeist documentary. A beyond Zeitgeist documentary. Anyway, I suppose she did not see my video on how fake and pseudo-scientific papers are fraudulently submitted by dishonest Muslims. Not pity. And well, now we witness a person running on thin ice with metal-capped shoes. Poshy wifey gets philosophical. Lo and behold and hallelujah. She overthrows epistemology in a single bold move and declares Islam the winner because everything is based on the Shahada. A few words mumbled by converts and Muslims alike. In Arabic by non-Arabic speaking people. Hovind and Tenbruggen Kate would love her. A few minutes later, she shows us her library, a propaganda book financed by some Muslim heritage awareness group. They hired Ben Kingsley, paid him a lot of money and told him to pretend to be amazed at all the so-called inventions made by so-called Muslims. So-called because neither is true, of course, but anyone interested can find that out for themselves. Anyway, she says good night. But then she must be sleepwalking or hubby chased her out of bed because one and a half hours later, she's back again with more monstrosities. This time it's to tell us that the guy she was calling for help is so awarded that he is unable to write something on Facebook. Well, or maybe I'm doing him injustice as he's blocked and banned by Hamza, like me. Yeah, but it must be a physical brother because what he writes would make Poshi Wifey proud. Send me the paper, not the refutation. Man, the paper is a refutation, you oaf. And it's now being cited all over the net and incredibly easy to find, like a few centimeters above these comments. Next, he says that Nutfa is equal to sperm. Yeah, right. Where does he pull that one from? Does he know he's now in direct confrontation with Hamza? Oh wait, he says it could also mean drop, which is also wrong and totally irrelevant. I mean, who says? Where? Why? How? Get with it, man. This is not kindergarten where you pull a napkin from a kid's ear and the kids go, ooh. Now Poshi Wifey too, or brother Rafiq or Rafiq Islam or whatever, <laughs> Actually, for once, ask a valid question. Why are people arguing? Well, Hamza made a claim. Captain Disguise showed this claim is unwarranted, false, fabricated, forwarded, and completely wrong. And Hamza is having a hissy fit and acting like a drama queen. And next, uh, well, Rafiq, whatever, says science has nothing to do with the Quran. And he never uses science, and he has developed science himself to remove the inherent Quranic inconsistencies. And a refutation of redemption is not refuted. There you have it. Now we all know, because he limited the comments to some remarks he will explain later. Man, unlike Poshy Wifey, the guy must be so totally awarded in this field. <laughs> we are told we can't talk or discuss unless we are all presuppositionalists, unless we do anyway. Then he has declared an impasse. Before anyone has said a single word, he knows the outcome. Wow, he is truly, totally awarded. But alas, there are two options. One, Hamza loses, which means an indictment against the Quran. And then Hamza wins. Does it mean the Quran is incorrect? I really wonder what new science means in his personal bubble. The second point is, well, that science is evil. He is so awarded and is incapable of finding a technology which is not harmful. Oh boy. He seems to have a problem with his definition of a god too, as he claims that studying the Quran will get a person closer to Allah. But how exactly does one get closer to an omnipresent entity, which is not really part of our universe in the first place? I suppose only a god could know. And finally, this highly awarded douchebag tells us we should read his books. Looking for what? Well, name and Wiley. <laughs> Good luck. 
I mean, it seems that this is the end of the conversation, where all that happened is that Hamza dodged a debate and ran away. A wife who thinks she's posh, makes unfounded and unsubstantiated claims, and the guy she calls for help is clueless. A normal day at the office when dealing with Muslim apologists. Thank you for your time.